Hello everyone, how are you? I think all of you are fit and fine during this uh, corona pandemic situation. Um, after uh, completion of uh, six week, we are now in week seven. Previously, we seen that there are uh, four essential elements of water supply system. Uh, number one was uh, source of supply and next one was uh, collection system third one is third one was treatment that is water treatment and the last one was uh, water transmission and distribution system so in week 7 we discuss about water treatment so let's see the water treatment uh, and this uh, different language for treatment purpose Uh, introduction uh, natural water contains uh, impurities in different forms the presence of these impurities in excess of acceptable limits makes the water unfit for domestic supplies the main objectives of water treatment are to make the water potable that means to make water safe to drink pleasant to taste and suitable for domestic use. The most common water treatment methods are plain sedimentation, sedimentation or coagulation, filtration and disinfection. Uh, we uh, see all these uh, methods, uh, treatment methods, uh, one after another. Some of the treatment process or unit operation for removal of specific impurities. That means if you want to uh, treat for a special purpose, then you can uh, use uh, this process of unit operation for this purpose. It's after aeration. That means if you want to incorporate uh, uh, air, then uh, you have to take aeration and in SARS where uh, there are water softening, arsenic removal, iron removal, activated carbon application, fluoridation and depolarization, demineralization and desalination. So, all these uh, things are special treatment purposes. Plain sedimentation. A particle having a specific gravity uh, more than one, that is heavier than water, tends to move downward in relatively quiescent water. Quiescent water means there is no movement of water. Uh, by the force of uh, gravity acceleration until the frictional resistance of the water equal to the gravitational force acting upon the particle. Thereafter, the particle travels with a constant vertical velocity for terminal velocity or settling velocity of the particle. That means when uh, the particle uh, falls from the upper portion to lower portion uh, along vertical direction then the velocity of that particle is called terminal velocity or settling velocity. Now we discuss about the settling velocity of the particle depends upon uh, horizontal flow of uh, velocity of water that means the settling velocity means vertical along vertical direction. So the vertical velocity depends upon the horizontal flow velocity of water. Horizontal flow velocity of water. Now another point is uh, shape and size of the particle. Shape and size is also an important factor which affect uh, uh, settling velocity because we know that uh, the heavier or larger particles settle uh, uh, 
faster than the uh, thinner uh, particle or smaller particle. The specific gravity of the particle, obviously, uh, the particle whose uh, specific gravity is more than several uh, uh, faster, and the viscosity of water, density of water, at the same way, uh, uh, temperature of water also affects the second velocity. Here we provide a uh, graph. Uh, in this uh, figure, settling of different types of particles in water. That means, if we uh, consider uh, the settling of different types of particles in water, then what happens? That means, uh, how many distance uh, travel with respect to time? Here uh, we provide a uh, curve. curve. Uh, here, uh, at first, the main portion uh, line indicate discrete settling, and this line indicate hindered settling, and this line indicate propellant settling. Now, let's see about this type of settling of uh, particle in water. Discrete particles are those which do not change in size, shape, and mass during settling. That means, discrete, uh, discrete particles are those which do not change their size, shape, and mass during settling from uh, upper portion to lower portion, and these do not influence each other by being too close. That means, when two particles uh, comes close together, there is no effect between these two particles. Particle settling under this condition is called discrete settling. That means uh, this portion is called discrete settling. In case of closely packed particles, the water displaced by the particles may cause additional friction and the settling velocity is reduced. This is termed as hindered settling. This one is uh, indicate hindered settling. Uh, that means, uh, uh, in, uh, regarding to uh, discrete settling, more times is required for hindered settling because here the uh, uh, settling velocity is reduced. As a result, uh, the time is taken more from discrete settling for hindered settling. Again, sometimes settling particles may adhere to each other and grow in size. That means when one or two particles uh, come in contact, uh, they uh, uh, form uh, a larger size and thus deviate from the settling characteristics represented by Stokes law. This may occur in settling of uh, airy or freshly formed flock by the process of flocculation with coagulant. These particles flocks tend to stick together and form new bigger particles which settle at a faster rate. This type of settling is called flocculant settling. That means uh, this portion or this line in the flocculant uh, settling when smaller particles uh, comes together and when uh, they are sticky then uh, two or more particles comes in contact and uh, form a larger particle then the larger particle uh, settle uh, faster than the others so this one takes uh, less time uh, for this uh, distance. So, uh, this all about the settling of different types of particles in water. Now, we see uh, design of sedimentation tank. A rectangular sedimentation tank can be subdivided into four different areas uh, comprised of angle inlet the settling outlet outlet and uh, slash accumulation zone 
The inlet zone serves to provide free and flow distribution over the full cross section and the outlet zone collects the clarified water over the full tank pool. Sludge is accumulated at the tank bottom where it is stored and removed periodically. The settling zone is the most important area where solid separation takes place. Here, uh, V0 is equal to limiting settling velocity. Here, H, uh, full depth of the tank, that means height of the tank. Uh, T is equal to detention time. So, if a particle moves from the top level to the bottom level, that means uh, if a particle uh, travel this distance within uh, this period, then the velocity will be, limiting velocity will be uh, V0. So, V0 is equal to H divided by T. Again, T, that is the detention time, is equal to volume divided by discharge. Volume means the volume of the tank, that is VLH. V, here width, L, length, and V, volume of the tank. And A is equal to height and T is equal to discharge. From the two equations, we get the limiting uh, settling velocity V0 is equal to Q divided by VL. The tank will remove all particles having settling velocity Vs greater than V0. And the particle with settling velocity Vs smaller than V0 will be removed in the proportion Vs uh, is to V0. The above analysis shows that the settling efficiency depends on the ratio between the influent flow rate Q and the surface area of the tank VL. This is called the surface loading. If we want to design a settling tank, then what types of uh, data is required? for this property. Uh, let's see about the uh, design criteria of a settling tank. So, to design a settling tank, data is required on settling characteristics of particles to be settled. The settling velocity of different friction of uh, discrete particle can be computed by Stokes law. The settling velocity of different friction of particle in water can be conveniently determined by a settling column test of a representative sample in the laboratory. In the absence of column test data, the design guideline given below may generally be followed for good result. That is, if uh, it is uh, the rectangular uh, horizontal flow settling tank, it is the uh, of a settling tank is the settling zone is the uh, width uh, along this direction is flow is the plan is the elevation is the inlet of uh, inflow of the water and outflow of the heated water uh, flows along this direction is the level of uh, water and the uh, sludge is removed uh, along this direction so uh, what's the uh, guideline to design a settling tank uh, for uh, surface loading S0 is equal to 2 divided by VL vary with 0.2 to 1 meter per hour. Detention time T vary uh, from 1 to 3 hours. Length or length to width ratio of uh, settling tank uh, vary from 3 to 8 and depth vary from 1.5 to 2 meters. Another term is uh, coagulation, uh, process of coagulation. Coagulation is the process of addition of a salt that produces positive ions in water. That means coagulation is a process. What types of process? A process of addition of the salt. That means this process add a salt. Fire add that produce positive ions in water. So, it added in water and produce positive ions. 
of a fine gel and application of a rapid aeration for good mixing, leading to the sterilization of fluids and promotion of frequent contact. The stabilization of fluids means very very smaller particles. Fluid particle means very very smaller particles. Uh, and uh, this sterilization is the opposition of sterilized. So this sterilization of this stabilization of polyps means the breakout of smaller particles and promotion of frequent contact among the particles. Rapid mixing is uh, required for immediate uh, uh, dispersal of coagulant throughout the mass of raw water. The mixing has to be rapid because the hydrolysis of coagulant and the stabilization of fluids take very little time. There are many devices available for rapid mixing of chemicals in water. Uh, this uh, may be grouped into two categories hydraulic rapid mixing and the mechanical rapid mixing. Let's see about uh, what is coagulant. Uh, this coagulant are commonly used in coagulation process. The salt which are used in coagulation process is called coagulant. So the salt which are used for coagulation purposes or coagulation process is called coagulant. This is depends on the characteristics of the water and the type of coagulant. It is not possible to compute the optimum dose of coagulant for particular water. A optimum dose of coagulant is usually determined in the lab by the jar test. The most widely used coagulant are the following uh, aluminum and iron salt. Uh, first one is aluminum sulfate, then uh, ferric sulfate, uh, ferric chloride, and the last one is ferrous sulfate. Uh, here we provide a uh, figure. The title of figure is pH zone of coagulation of ferric sulfate and aluminum sulfate. That is Which type of coagulant is best for the water which contains the pH from 5 to 10? That means uh, you are asked to find out which type of coagulant is best for this uh, sample water. Then you have to first find out what is the pH value of that sample water? If you find out the pH of that uh, sample water, then you can easily uh, uh, indicate what types of uh, which uh, coagulant is best for uh, coagulation purpose. So let's see uh, uh, regarding this, uh, what uh, coagulant is uh, best or vary with pH. Trivalent aluminium and uh, ferric uh, ion are preferred for their higher destabilization capacity. That means aluminium and ferric ion has uh, more destabilization capacity. Each coagulant has optimum pH for best coagulation. Here, uh, this figure shows the pH range in which coagulation will reduce turbidity to half using aluminum sulfate and ferric sulfate. The iron salt has the advantage that, that is uh, uh, this one, the iron salt has the advantage that it is very effective over a wider range of pH. Why? The best result is obtained from aluminum salt with a pH slightly higher than 7. 
that means when the value of p is very widely then the peak surface is best but when the ph uh, is slightly greater than uh, 7 then aluminum sulfate is best uh, as a coagulant now flocculation flocculation is the process of gentle and continuous stirring for agglomeration of microflocks form during the coagulation process that means uh, when you provide uh, coagulation process then the smaller particles form then what happen for flocculation flock means to act uh, uh, in one you can think add in one place uh, one thing that is flocculation is the process of gentle and continuous stirring for agglomeration of microflocks microflocks that form uh, during the coagulation process to produce larger flocks with good settling characteristics flocculation requires very slow and continuous mixing of water for frequent contact between fine particles and the hydrolyzed product of the coagulant the efficiency of the flocculation process is largely determined by the number of uh, random uh, collisions among the coagulant particle per unit of time also rapid mixing for the uh, sharing of flocks due to the high velocity gradient and here we provide uh, example example uh, regarding uh, the dimension of settling tank uh, find the dimension of a settling tank to treat 45 meter cube of raw water per hour and the overflow rate is 0.5 meter per hour and the detention time is 3 hours here uh, some data is given here regarding a uh, settling tank and we have to find out the dimension dimension of the uh, settling tank uh, let's see the solution of uh, this problem overflow rate of surface loading is uh, given uh, 0.5 So uh, our project is equals to P divided by uh, L D. That means uh, L D uh, weight. So from this equation, uh, we can find out here that uh, P is equals to 45. So 45 divided by L D is equals to 0.4. And from here, we can easily find out L D is equals to 90 meters square. Detention time T is equal to L D S divided by T, and from here we can easily find out the value of uh, L D S because the value of T is equal to uh, 45, and the value of T is equal to 3 L D N R. So the value of L D S is equal to 135 meter T. Now from equation one and two. We get here uh, the value of L D is given 90. If we put the value of L D in this equation, then we can easily find out the value of L D, and it is to be uh, uh, 1.5. Now we consider length is equal to uh, 4 particular feet. We can ask where we get 4. Previously, we showed that the design criteria of a uh, settling tank it may vary three to eight length to width ratio. So here we consider four length is to be four times of width. Substituting the value of a in equation one, that is here, four b square is equal to ninety. Now b is equal to root of a ninety divided by two, that is uh, b is equal to four point seven four meter. So the value of L is to be 18.97 meter. So the size of the settling tank may be taken as 4.75 meter multiplied with uh, 19 meter 
multiply with 1.5 theta and this all are about the uh, size or dimension of the separate term so, uh, so uh, successively we uh, carry uh, different types of uh, treatment process uh, later we discuss about uh, filtration process and disinfection of water process so today is uh, no more uh, stay safe uh, keep safe the environment uh, thank you everyone